really like this side of you. Really? Yeah, just so decisive. Well, check this out. A standing desk. Denied! <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Leonard was the best on The Big Bang Theory. Are you some kind of nerd? <laughs> Not some kind of nerd. I am the king of nerds. For this list, we'll be looking at Leonard's shining moments, the time when the self-professed king of nerds was the king of the show. Which Leonard moments stand out for you? Leave us a comment and let us know. Number 10. When he went camping with Howard and Raj. Leonard and his friends are far from the stoner types, but when he, Howard and Raj unknowingly chow down on some pot cookies, Leonard has some pretty deep thoughts regarding his name. I hate my name. <laughs> it has nerd in it. <laughs> Len nerd. The realization that Leonard has the word nerd in it really throws him for a loop. While throwing the audience into hysterical fits of laughter, the only thing better than Lenny's disappointment with his given name is his decision that a really cool name would be Angelo. You know what's a cool name? Angelo. <laughs> that has angel and jello in it. We can't really argue with him given that jello really does make everything better. People could call me Angie. <laughs> Yo, Angie, how's it going? Number nine, when he stopped being a people pleaser. There's nothing wrong with wanting to make people happy, but with Leonard, the desire to please everyone else has usually taken priority over his own wants and needs. Well, almost always. In an episode in the show's final season, Leonard is given the task of allocating extra grant money at the university. Really? Wow, what an honor, thank you. So, uh, how do I decide who gets the money? How do you decide anything? Think about it with your brain and then say it with your mouth. And although he at first struggles with trying not to make anyone angry, in the end, he makes everyone angry. Except for himself. But at the last minute, someone submitted an application for a pretty cool European dope laser, and they made a very compelling case. What was the case? Oh, that it was me and I wanted it. His final decision on who gets the money is a wonderfully selfish move that would, and does, make Sheldon proud. No matter what decision I made, people are gonna be mad at me, and this way, I get a laser. That is the most selfish thing you've ever done. I'm proud of you. I don't care. Yes, you do. Yeah, I do. Number eight, when he got Penny to see a documentary about a dam. You know, we haven't spent time alone together since we broke up. Oh, it's not a date, Leonard. It's just a man and a woman hanging out, not having sex at the end of the night. <laughs> Sounds like most of my dates. In season five, Penny and Leonard go out alone together for the first time since breaking up. The non-date begins at the movies with Penny wanting to see the new Jennifer Aniston flick, which Leonard doesn't want to see. He almost goes along with it until he has a moment of personal strength and realization that he doesn't have to do whatever Penny wants. See, you know, that's the great thing. We're out as friends. This is not a date. Sex is off the table. So let's go learn why hydroelectric power might not be the environmental bargain you think it is. He stands up for himself and not only gets Penny to see a documentary about building a dam in South America, but she also pays for her own ticket. The tickets are 11 bucks. <laughs> Not a date. <laughs> Number seven, when he came up with the superfluid idea. We all know that Sheldon Cooper is a genius. He certainly isn't shy about telling everyone. You haven't spoken in hours and I'm starting to get worried. Please say something. Leonard, prepare to be humbled and weep at the glory of my genius. <laughs> nope, it was better before. But in case you forgot, so is Leonard. And he proved it in the season eight episode the troll manifestation, when an idea about superfluids flashed in his head during dinner with Penny. Imagine our three space is the surface of an n-dimensional superfluid bubble. This is exciting. This is really exciting. We're not sure we completely understand the idea or the physics behind it, but Sheldon certainly did and boy was he impressed. And in the end, if a me wow cat sticker doesn't make you the best, then we don't know what does. It's not just a sticker. It's a sticker of a kitty saying, me wow. 
I'm not a preschooler. What, it, fine, I'll take it back. I earned this back off. Number six, when he questioned Sheldon the waiter. Did you remember to ask for the chicken with broccoli to be diced, not shredded? Yes. Even though the menu description specifies shredded? Yes. Brown rice, not white? Yes. Did you stop at the Korean grocery and get the good hot mustard? Yes. Did you pick up the low sodium soy sauce from the market? Yes. One of great running gags on the show is Sheldon's constant questioning of Leonard regarding the specifics of his food. And while funny, it's also extremely annoying. One has to be impressed with how Leonard puts up with it every time, although it might have to do with the fact that he dealt with the same thing from his mother. Oolong? Yes. Loose, not bagged? Yes. Steeped three minutes? Yes. Two percent milk? Yes. Warmed separately? Yes. One teaspoon sugar? Yes. Raw sugar? Yes. <laughs> It's cold. But regardless, one of the top Leonard moments occurs when Sheldon takes on the job of waiter at the Cheesecake Factory, and Leonard is able to give him a taste of his own medicine. Black beans, not pinto beans? Yes. Double guacamole? Of course. No cilantro? Nope. Lettuce shredded, not chopped? Yep. You understand why I'm doing this to you? I do. <laughs> That'll be all. Number five, when he tried to learn about football. Leonard is a brilliant guy with a variety of interests. But sport isn't one of them, except for Quidditch and kite fighting, of course. I remind you that you're talking to the seeker, beater, chaser, and water boy of the third place Griffith Park Quidditch team. I know, watching your boyfriend run around with a broomstick between his legs isn't something you forget. But when Penny doesn't invite him to hang out with her friends to watch a football game, Leonard takes it upon himself to learn the sport. With the help of Sheldon and a football for dummies book, he definitely learns the rules and technicalities of the game. I really appreciate this. Yeah, yeah. All right, Poindexter, sit down, shut up, and listen. <laughs> I'm sorry? Oh, that's how my father always began our football conversations. Although relaying that knowledge in public in a way that isn't awkward, that he didn't learn. Oh, look at that. The Oklahoma coach has thrown down a red flag indicating he's challenging the ruling on the field. Hope he's right, because if he's not, it'll cost him one of his three timeouts. <laughs> but you got to give him props for making the effort. Number four, when he bought Penny a car. When Penny decides to quit her job at the Cheesecake Factory in order to focus 100% of her attention on acting, Leonard is, well, shall we say, less than 100% supportive of the idea. You got your job back. That is great news. I, mean, I didn't want to say anything, but you are making the right choice. But to plunge yourself into debt right now would be literally insane. Yeah, I'm just returning my uniform. He wants Penny to be successful, but he's also a realist and not as willing to take the leap of faith Penny is. This, as you may imagine, leads to some conflict in the relationship. I'm not sure you should have quit, but if you care so much what I think, why didn't you ask me before you did it? Oh, so now I need your permission? Would you have asked me before you quit your job? Yes. But in the end, the romance ninja makes an amazingly romantic gesture and buys Penny a car so that she can continue to pursue her dreams. I thought we'd take yours. I don't understand. It's nothing fancy, but it'll get you to auditions, and at least for now, you don't have to go back to waitressing. They say that diamonds are a girl's best friend, but in this case, it was a used sedan, and it couldn't have been more perfect. Number three, when he forgave his mother. Leonard's relationship with his mother has always been strained, with her clinical and emotionless style of parenting leaving Lenny feeling unloved and unsupported, and more like her test subject than her child. Sheldon, you don't give your mother enough credit. She's warm, she's loving, she doesn't glue electrodes to your head to measure your brain waves while potty training. In the show's final season, when Leonard finally thinks he's connecting with her like he's always wanted, he finds out she's only doing it as research for a book. This has all been work to you? Hanging out with me and coming to my lab, I thought we were enjoying each other's company, but it was just research. Rather than once again internalizing it and being sad, Leonard finally confronts his mother and, in an even bigger emotional move, forgives her in order to heal himself. I forgive you. I didn't ask you to forgive Too me. bad. I forgive you anyway. <laughs> And I forgive myself for taking so long to do it. It's a powerful moment that allowed Leonard to finally leave a lot of baggage behind him. Number two, when he gave Penny a snowflake. Okay, so if the only grand romantic gesture Leonard had ever done was buying Penny a car, it would have been enough. But it was just one of many things he did for her that made us happy cry. Again, he doesn't call himself the romance ninja for nothing. I'm like a romance ninja. <laughs> 
You don't see it coming, and then bam, romance, watch out, hearts, kisses, love. Ooh, yeah! In the season three premiere, when the guys come back from spending three months in the North Pole, Leonard and Penny finally get together. Leonard, you're back. Yeah, I just stopped by to say, hmm. <laughs> But Leonard has something more for Penny besides his passionate longing. Something that is at once both ubiquitous and completely unique, as well as being super duper romantic, an Arctic snowflake. It's a snowflake from the North Pole. Are you serious? <laughs> It'll last forever. I preserved it in a 1% solution of polyvinyl acetyl resin. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Cello Apology. Even we wouldn't be able to stay mad at him. I'm sorry, Alex, hit on me, hit on me, hit on me. Sorry, Alex, hit on me, I'd no idea I'm cute. Standing up to Kurt, David defeats Goliath once again. That's right, you saw what you saw. <laughs> That's how we roll in the Shire. Getting a girl's digits in the comic book store, an accomplishment that gets him immortalized on the wall of heroes. Later. Did I just see you pick up a girl in a comic book store? Because if you did, you get your picture up there on the wall of heroes. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, when he cried with Sheldon. For all the jokes Leonard makes and for as difficult as Sheldon can be, these two really are the best of friends who, as Leonard explained to Professor Proton, need each other. You know what, Sheldon is the smartest person I have ever met. He's a little broken and he needs me. I guess I need him too. This is captured perfectly in one moment in season eight as the best friends talk about living arrangements. Leonard lets out all of his built-up frustrations about not being able to live with the woman he loves because of Sheldon. I don't live with the woman I love because of you. No other reason, just you. Is that true? Yes, it's true. The last time I brought it up, you had an emotional breakdown and got on a train and ran away. And Sheldon, in a rare moment of emotional honesty, breaks down the thought of not living with his best friend. Which, of course, makes Leonard cry as well. I'm aware of how difficult I can be, so I just want to say, Thank you for putting up with me. Buddy. <laughs> Even though they do eventually stop being roommates, as Sheldon tells Leonard at the former's wedding. After today, you are officially, and more important, legally, Amy's problem. <laughs> Don't be silly, Leonard. I will always be your problem. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.